Welcome to Chichen Itza. What is this place that you are watching? Is this a city? No, nobody was living on this place. Remember, you only are, you only are watching temples, okay? This is a social place. Just a temporary days, market days, sometimes sacrifice days. And the party, and the market, and everyone will back to their home. It's like the church. The people is going at the Sunday, 8 o'clock, 11 o'clock, something like this. And this one that you are watching is the biggest, the most important building in the city. Okay? Now, what is that? Is this a house? Just watch. Imagine that this is your house and you have to climb every day. No. That's crazy. It's really hard, right? No, what is that? Tell me, what is that for you? Is this a pyramid? A temple? Temple, it's okay. Pyramid is very wrong. Okay? It's not a pyramid. Temple, it's okay, but if you want to know the real meaning, you'll have to ask to the Mayas, and the Mayas will say to you, no, this is not a temple. Repeat with me. This is a witch. Come on. Witch. Come on, all together. Witch. Witch. This one, and this one, and this one over there, no matter which Mayas you are, the, may, the name of the main building will be exactly the same. Witch. Okay? Witch. What is the witch meaning? Mountain. Because for the Mayas, this building that you are watching is an artificial mountain, not a pyramid, not a temple, it's an artificial mountain. Why? This is because before to the Mayas, on Mexico we had Olmecs, the oldest civilization that teach the Mayas and the rest of the Mexicans to worship the mountains. Because water, food, animals, everything is coming from the mountains. The mountains have a cave. This cave is the one of the Mother Earth and the access to the underworld. They will worship this place. But the Mayas separate to the Olmecs. The Mayas were coming to the coast. Cancun, Playa del Carmen, Chichen Itza. Okay? And tell me, can you see any mountain all around this place? No. We are at the level of the ocean or under, under the level of the ocean. No mountains. So the Mayas decide to build their own mountains. It's an artificial mountain. Some people will say to me, Frank, watch, looks like a pyramid. Why the Maya shaped like a pyramid? Because it's the only option. They build this place with their hands, wooden stones, and the pyramid is a universal shape, okay? Like the circle, like the squares. And they will choose the pyramid to support the stones with their own weight, to don't use concrete, okay? So it's a, a half a more easy construction, okay? But they have a main reason. The Mayas worship the stars. Which one is the most important star? The sun, exactly. They were watching and writing about the cycle of the sun. And imagine that we have an imaginary line. Six o'clock, the sunrise will be over there. All day, the sun will be over there, over there on the top of the earth and at the sunset, over there. This is the cycle of the sun all around the day. If you could draw a line on this cycle, you will get something like this. The Mayas shaped the building like a pyramid just because they were trying to imitate the cycle of the sun. Got you the idea? Mm -hmm. So the building is an artificial mountain and it's trying to imitate the sun. What else? The building have more meanings. As can you see, we have a room on the top mm -hmm. and inside of the building we have a secondary room. Why? Because this is an artificial mountain and should have a cave. Inside of the building we have a cave, we have a room. Okay? Uh, let me show you a picture to give you an idea. Okay? This is the building and as can you see inside we have a secondary building. And on the top, we have the temple that represents this room, that is the access to the underworld or the womb of the Mother Earth. Can you see this room in the middle? We have a secondary building inside, and on the top, we have this room. Okay? Now, today it's closed for you. You can go there. You don't have the access. Why you don't have the access? Nine years ago, was open. But the people that was there was painting the walls. John was here, Mary and John, love forever, you know. But I, I have a picture, so don't worry. If you could have the chance to go inside, you are going to see that thing. Can you see? We have a jaguar drone. Okay? Now, who is this jaguar? This jaguar is inside of the building, and this jaguar is named Tezcatlipoca. Who is Tezcatlipoca? Is the lord of the night. And this jaguar, Tezcatlipoca, represents the duality of the sun. Why? Today, when you see the sunset, you understand that the sun is going to the other side of the earth, it's going to China, okay? But not for the Mayas. At the moment of the sunset, the sun was descending into the underworld. Because the Mayas have a heaven and have an underworld. And there, into the underworld, the sun will become in a jaguar. 
So this Jaguar represents the duality of the sun. Okay? What else? In front of this Jaguar, we have a man. This man. As can you see, we have this man that lay on his back. Mm -hmm. Can you see? There is a face. This man that you are watching is named Chuck Mole. Can you see? Mm -hmm. There is a face. Can you see? Looks like a fetus. It's on the front of the Jaguar. On the back side is a Jaguar. Can you see the Jaguar on the back side? This, this Chuck Mole is a messenger, an emissary. The only work of the Chuck Mole is take offerings in the, no, in the name of the gods. Okay? As can you see, the, the, the Jaguar is on the back side because the people, the royalty was going there to talk with the sun into the underworld. But before to talk with the, with the sun, with this Jaguar, they will have to set offerings on the Chuck Mole's belly. Because this Chuck Mole is the messenger, is there to receive those offerings in the name of the gods. So, this room was just a total with the gods into the underworld. And the only people that was going there was the king, the priest, and the queen. Just this. Just important people. Okay? Questions about that? No? Okay. As can you see, we have the room on the top. What is the meaning? Exactly the same. To do the same. But in this case, to talk with the gods on the heaven. Yeah. We can say that the building is like a big phone. It's the way that they have to communicate with the other levels. Heaven and underworld. Artificial mountain trying to imitate the sun and a big phone. Got your idea? Mm -hmm. Now, the building have more meanings. Remember the Mayan calendar, the civil calendar? How many days have this calendar? 365. How many steps on the building? Mm -hmm. Well, they completely destroy it this side. But on the past, you should have in total 365 steps. Four sides. On each side, we have 90 steps. In total, 360. Where are the last five steps? The upper temple that you are watching have five more steps. Then on the top, we have five more steps. In total, 365. Okay? So they destroy it. Now, if you put attention, on each side, we have nine platforms. Nine plus nine on the other side, 18. The month with 20 days. But where is the last month with five days? I told you, the upper temple with the last five steps. And if you put attention, on every platform, you are going to see three panels. Watch over there. Three panels on every platform. Can you see? Three panels, three panels on every platform. Okay? Now, on each side, we have 26 panels. 26 plus 26, 52. And the number 52 wraps in the wheels, the cycle, the years of the Mayan calendar to celebrate the party of the new beginning. So, we have the days, we have the months, we have the cycle. That means that this building is a the biggest Mayan calendar in this world, a three-dimensional calendar. Did you know that? No. 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 Now, the building was painted. What, which color? Red. Of course, 1,000 years ago, blue was exactly like this one. Why the red color? Because the red color represents your blood, <coughs> the liquid of the life, your chulel. Now, today it's very easy to go to the store to get a bottle of paint to paint the building. For the Mayas, it was very complicated. To make the red color, to paint this villain, they will use the local soil. For example, over there, can you see? Mm -hmm. It's red, because it has a lot of iron. But they will have to mix this soil with a tapulguita. What is the tapulguita? Do you know the tapulguita? Nobody? Mm -hmm. It's a volcanic mineral. Just by them to make the red color, the red stucco. Now, it's a volcanic <coughs> mineral. Do you have seen a volcano on this place? <laughs> no. Where are the volcans? Guatemala and Belize. That means that the Mayas of Chichen Itza have to go running, walking, sailing all around the coast to get the Tapolita to back to Chichen Itza to make the red stucco to paint the buildings. Okay? It was very complicated. Now it's organic paint. With the time, the wits, the time, the moistness start to eat and destroy and are turning into the black color. Black color is completely original. Okay? As can you see on the top, we have white walls. Can you see? Why it's white? Because sometimes those stones are collapsing, okay? We take the stone, we clean, and we stick again. Black areas, original. White areas, restoration. Mm. As can you see, this side of the building, it's completely destroyed. Why? Right. Because on the year 1527, Francisco de Montejo arrived to Chichen Itza, a Spanish man, not to take pictures, not to take a tour. This man was looking for gold. And they used to say that our gold was under the stones and start to destroy the building with dynamite explosive. Today it's impossible to make a restoration and the problem is that we don't have gold on this place. 
the Mayas didn't just meet us. So, just stones. So, this man realized about that and moved to destroy other plants. Questions? No? How oh. did they keep the stone in place, not cement, sand? Or how did they sometimes they will use the weight of the stones and sometimes they will use cement. Okay? As can you see, it's the same stone. Okay? This stone that you are watching is limestone. Okay? Uh, the limestone that you are watching was alive. Why was alive? Because it's made from shells, fish bones, and coral reef. Because 65 million years ago, all this place was under the ocean, and the explosion of the asteroid that killed the dinosaurs was here. With the explosion, all those animals become in fossil this stone. Okay? Now, could be hard. But it's fragile. <laughs> if you try to cut, to shape a face, to shape a block, will get broken and sharpened in pieces. The only way to water this stone is heating. You have to cook at 900 Celsius. One time you reach this level, it starts to become powdery. It's more easy to cook, it's more easy to make a carving. If you continue heating at 1600 Celsius, this limestone becoming dust. This dust is the concrete, the cement, used by them to stick the stuff like a mortar. Okay? But they so didn't use all the time. Why? Because imagine, you have to reach 1600 Celsius, need a lot of fire, a lot of wood to make this fire, right? So demand a, a big deforestation. So sometimes they will use, sometimes not. For the reason some buildings are collapsing, other buildings have a better quality. Okay? They will use this cement just on those kind of buildings, the most important buildings. Because it was very expensive and as can you see, they only work, they only made flat the face and not the rest of the body. Okay? Because it's complicated to reach those levels. Okay? Now, the people that was dedicated to this business, the builders, just to have a short life. I told you that the Mayans reached 50 years, but the builders only reached like 30 years old. Why? Because these people was working the stones with 900 centers in front of their face. Today we have a special switch. The Mayans didn't have, they were born in their body. So they have a short life. Okay? Questions? When did the department first start re-excavating all this? This place? Uh, no, uh, the first work is on the year 1884 uh, by, uh, by an explorer, uh, Edward Thompson, from the University of Harvard. Uh, but this man was an archaeologist, was here just to take permission. Okay? But the first one that stopped the excavation that took with him to the uh, Museum of Pivot. Okay? Or oh, real archaeologist more dedicated to the conservation was till the year 1910, after the Mexican Revolution. Okay?